answers um, about how the, if, if everybody's following up to now or are there any questions? So if you have a question, um, then Skype it and put it into the Skype, into the Slack chat. That's right. That's right. But I just want to see whether, whether, whether uh, there is anything uh, that uh, if people have, any, uh, you know, if, if people are following, where, where, where do we stand? So far, 20 people have answered yes, they are following and it's slowly ticking up and there's no no's. Okay. Since you're there's asking a, right now, there's just a question on Slack. How does Q squared act like a microscope? It's really the fact that this, this Q squared or uh, it, it, uh, it, it sends it. So, okay. So um, I'm not sure that I fully understand what, what, um, what is meant by, by how does it act like a microscope? I mean, the, so the if if you if you have a hard enough collision right if this this the the, the the this this photon here is 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 high enough then it can actually because because you're you were at a, at a small so okay so the, you have the heisenberg uncertainty principle basically right where you say delta e delta t right or uh delta p delta x right so if you have a very very virtual guy right you you um, or very high energy you're really able to resolve by this Heisenberg uncertainty principle small scales into the system so if your proton or your nucleus would have substructure right you would be able to see it precisely because of that okay because you're sensitive to very very small scales so in a sense you will be able to not collide with the proton or the nucleus as a whole but you will be able to collide with the substructure that enters that exists inside of the the the, the proton or the nucleus okay i hope that answers the question thank you okay. and one more question was posted is there a simple argument why a parton distribution function is universal in vacuum Um, I mean, it's, it's, that's the thing. It's, I think the, the, the question is, well, that's why I put it in quotation marks, right? It's universal in the sense that, um, because you have a vacuum shower, right? Not because you're in the vacuum, right? There's nothing that sort of would modify what your, what your shower is, right? So, um, if, if you have E plus E minus goes to Q, Q bar, that Q, Q bar now, of course, exists in the, uh, in the vacuum. And uh, the showering process, which I will talk about in a second here, right, is going to be happening in the vacuum. So whether the, the QQ var essentially came from uh, the, the, the proton or it came from a nucleus, it doesn't really matter. It, the showering process is still going to happen in the vacuum, right? When we, when we look at what's happening in a heavy ion collision, the showering process is not going to happen in the vacuum anymore, okay? It's going to happen inside of the quark gluon plasma. And then you have you would have strongly interacting degrees of freedom, the quarks and the gluons, with which the partons in the shower can interact with, right? So as long as you you're showering in the vacuum, in that sense, you have a universal uh, um, fragmentation function, or, 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 or uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think maybe you have to move on. There's some more yes, questions, yes, but yes. maybe you can sure. respond to them in the chat, and then. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll keep a look at, uh, out on the chat and, and, and answer questions uh, throughout the day as, as, they, uh, as they pop up, or even later, maybe, uh, even later as well. Okay, so... Yeah, how so I, the... I will interrupt you maybe another time. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. So, so once we, you created these partons, how do, how do they shower? Okay, let's quickly just go over how, how that ends up working out. Okay. Uh, so after the, the hard scattering, what you end up having is, is you end up creating highly virtual and highly energetic objects, right? And because they are highly virtual, because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right, delta E, delta T, uh, the delta E is sort of this virtuality, and the delta T, so if your delta E is very large, delta T has to be small, so these, these guys are actually very much short-lived, okay? And because they, they, they are short-lived, they will decay. And this decay essentially is going to happen according to uh, Fermi's Gordon rule, right? So you would have essentially a competition between two things, uh, competition between phase space. So the, the, the higher you're going virtuality or higher you're going energy, the more you open up the phase space. However, uh, the, um, the, high, the lower, you go in, uh, lower you go in virtuality, okay, the stronger your coupling constant becomes, 
Okay, so then you have a competition between a larger phase space and 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 coupling constants between um, between transitions. Okay. So these two things are essentially going to sort of be competing against one another. Okay. So in the following diagrams that are going to be showing. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, depict uh, uh, thick arrows and long arrows as uh, as being so long versus short arrows are going to be low versus high energy and thick versus thin is going to be uh, low versus high uh, virtuality. Okay. So if you have a highly virtual object, uh, so most of the shower evolution is essentially going to be governed by the splitting into the daughters. As, as depicted here. And these daughters will typically have, because of the larger face space, will typically tend to split to lower virtuality, but that virtuality is not gonna be like two orders of magnitude or something smaller than the original virtuality, but it's gonna be sort of close-ish to, uh, um, to the parent virtuality. So that basically means that yes, you can still generate really uh, low virtuality objects, but most of the shower development is gonna be guided by these uh, harder splitting, so to speak. Uh, in these harder splittings as well, uh, because Q squared is still sort of rather large, uh, that means that your alpha s is also rather small. And also, because you have uh, still a rather virtual object, that, uh, that virtual object is not going to live for a very long time. Okay, so it's a rather a short lifetime of, the, of that object. So what you're gonna have basically is that you're gonna have a development uh, first and foremost that happens in terms of virtuality, where you start with a highly virtual object and you slowly, in this cascading fashion, transition into lower and lower virtuality objects. Okay? Of course, the longer, the, the, the lower the virtuality is, the longer lived the parton is, and the, uh, the larger the alpha s that, uh, that parton, these, uh, these later stage partons are gonna experience, so therefore, there's going to be more interactions between daughter partons, so these daughters among themselves, and the daughters over here interacting with the daughters on the other side of the, uh, uh, the these uh, two, two parton initiating uh, jets. Okay, and at some point, the the the, the alpha s is essentially going to overcome any kind of uh, of, of splitting, and really, you 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 at some point enter in, into a non perturbative region where hydronization really is the, the, the thing that's going to, to, to happen. And hydronization, as I already mentioned, is essentially uh, uh, incorporated inside of these uh, fragmentation functions. Okay, so now let, uh, let's, let's digress a little bit and, and uh, talk about uh, what happens in, inside of the QGP. There, as I already mentioned in this question, uh, the, 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 the splitting here is going to be modified inside of the quark gluon plasma precisely because some of these partons can collide with partons inside of the quark gluon plasma, okay? So then you, you, you have to worry about uh, energy scales of these collisions and virtualities at which these collisions happen, right? So, uh, and typically we would we split this into these three categories over here. You can either have high energy, high virtuality, uh, low virtuality, high energy, and then you have the low energy, low virtuality sector. So the first two sectors here is, is something that you can uh, hope to describe by using perturbation theory. Whereas this low virtuality, low energy sector, this is really where non-perturbative physics enters. And so therefore I will not be talking about them here so much. And I will mostly be focusing on the shower development at high energy, high virtuality or, or, or low virtuality and high energy. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me move on uh, and let's talk about uh, part of energy, energy loss inside of the Jetscape uh, uh, inside of Jetscape. So uh, as I already mentioned, this, low, uh, this uh, high energy, high virtuality part, portion of the shower, th 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 there is actually a module in the Jetscape framework called Matter that is responsible for uh, the, the, the showering in this high energy, high virtuality. And in this portion of the shower, the main type of 